right, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at ratchets. Now a ratchet is a component of a climbing rescue system that is unidirectional, which means a load can travel in one direction but not travel the other. So you can think of belaying from the top of multi-pitch climbing using your guide ATC in auto block mode. That is performing as a ratchet, where the climber can come up, but if they fall, the device automatically rock, locks off. So obviously here I'm sitting in the snow, so we're going to be talking specifically about rescue systems, which is where the term ratchet is most commonly used. So first we're going to start with one of the more simple ratchets, which requires very little specialized equipment. It simply requires two non-locking carabiners, ideally these sort of locking or non-locking Ds. So right here I have a vertically placed mid-clip picket and I'm going to clip my non-locking carabiners in with their gates facing up and out of the snow. Now anytime you're working on a master point with ratchets in snow, you can encounter problems. The surface of that snow could be hard and in hard snow surface, sometimes the rope can get entangled up and can jam. So I'm going to actually dig a small hole underneath this master point to prevent the rope from getting jammed up and possibly disfiguring the type of ratchet that I'm using or uncamming a device. So I'm just going to dig a little hole here. If this anchor right here were not on Dyneema but were made out of a dynamic piece of material like you'd extended your master point using a climbing rope or a glacier travel rope, those are going to have a lot of movement. So when I dig this hole, instead of digging a little hole where it's going to be suspended in one spot, I'm going to want to dig a trough to account for the rope stretch. Once it gets lo loaded, it's going to move down. In the case of like an 8 millimeter glacier rope, it could move down 2 feet under load. So just make sure that you're accommodating rope stretch. Okay, so I've got my two non-locking Ds, not opposite and opposed, they're facing the same direction. And now I identified my load side. So my load side here is my knot. So this is where my climber would be attached. And now I'm simply going to clip through both of these non-locking carabiners, the same orientation like that. I'm going to pass the bite around from the opposite side of the load strand. Okay, so load strand here, opposite side here. I pass this around so it captures both of these. And now I'm going to clip this back through only through the first non locking carabiner here. And now when I pull down on my uh, non load strand, my device here, which in this case I'm using a Garda hitch, which is also called the Alpine clutch, will allow the rope to travel in one direction and lock up in the other direction. You'll also notice that when the hitch is built that way, the rope is traveling over the spine of these carabiners and had I not dug this small bit out here, that bit of rope on the back of the spine of those carabiners can sometimes jam up and deform this hitch and if it's deformed enough it could no longer bite. Okay, so we want to make sure that we have a little bit of space there. Okay, this next time type of ratchet that I'm going to show is probably the most common type of ratchet that you'll see people using when they're traveling on glaciers in recreational groups in the United States. It consists of a friction hitch, in this case a prusik hitch, which is a good choice because it locks strongly in two directions and it doesn't release very easily under load. This particular friction hitch here, this prusik, is constructed with five millimeter sterling brand nylon cord, six feet of it tied into a loop with a double fisherman's knot. And then there's three wraps of Prusik on there, which is a good amount of holding power. So that's going to be the stopping part of my ratchet. And the redirecting portion is simply going to be a locking carabiner. 
The choice of locking carabiner matters to a small degree. I've chosen a nice round stock locking carabiner which has less friction than something with I-beam construction. So to transfer this load, I would simply clip this prusik hitch in and if that is under load, you can see that friction hitch would take the load. And then, because I'm trying to conserve resources, I'm simply going to clip the rope into the same locking carabiner and lock it down. Now, one of the problems with this particular form of ratchet is that it is not self-minding, which means as this load comes up and forward, if it continues to come forward, this friction hitch can pass through this carabiner, and if it becomes loaded now, then this friction hitch can unjam itself and send my friend all the way down. So it's very important that someone has a responsibility of minding this friction hitch to make sure it doesn't pass through that carabiner and start to release. So now, after it's loaded, if it starts to haul up, someone can simply push with their fingers on the front of the hitch to keep it releasing, sliding it, and then when it engages again, it will perform its ratchet function and not let the load continue down. So we're going to be looking at this particular ratchet system and some of the simpler tools with, uh, combined with our other crevasse rescue systems. Something to keep in mind, there are times when this rope here that's moving can rub over your friction hitch, the likelihood of that becoming a problem for you is very low. But for those who are concerned about that, provided you have a shelf in your system, you can reverse the order and have two carabiners. So first, when you clip your friction hitch in, you clip it in to your shelf, and then you clip your rope in to a locking carabiner below your shelf, and now that separation ensures that the rope is not going to run over your locking carabiner and you won't have any issues there. Okay, this next ratchet system looks very similar to the last one. We're going to start with a friction hitch and a round stock locking carabiner, but we're going to add one component to this to make it a self-minding system. So. If you had a self-minding pulley, then you could put the self-minding pulley on this locking carabiner and that would work out great. But sometimes I don't carry a self-minding pulley or a prusik minding pulley. So I'm going to start the same way. I'm going to clip my prusik hitch in and I'm going to look and see about what the distance is, provided I'm not the one holding the load if we're doing a real crevasse rescue. I can determine maybe that distance is more distance than I need and for every stroke that I pull up I'm going to lose almost a foot of progress. It won't be captured because of the length of my friction hitch. So I'm going to shorten this and I'm going to shorten this by the length of a belay device provided I'm carrying one which I may if I'm doing patch, uh, pitches of fifth class climbing on ice or on rock then I might have this with me, so I may decide to bring this and not a Prusik minding pulley. So I'm going to look and say, okay, that's going to be probably about another four to five inches down. So I'm going to take off everything about, except for about four to five inches of Prusik cord by simply tying an overhand knot in that Prusik loop. And now I'm going to clip below this overhand knot, which essentially shortens the length of my usable prusik. Okay, so I'm clipping that in just like so. And I'm not locking it down yet. I'm also going to load my ATC in that locking carabiner, and I'm going to pass a bite of rope through my ATC and clip it through that locking carabiner, just as if I was going to belay off my harness for top rope. Now what I've done with this ATC is I'm using the side plates of the device to block this friction hitch from passing through. So after setting up my mechanical advantage system, when this strand begins to move and the friction hitch butts up against the plate of the device, you'll see the friction hitch will no longer engage in that direction. But when the direction is reversed, 
friction hitch will bite down strongly. Now you may ask, here I have a guide style ATC, why am I not simply setting up my guide ATC in auto block mode, clipping through the ear of the device up to my master point, and then it would automatically be set up as a ratchet. The reason for that is in auto block mode, when these two strands of rope are pitched together, there's a significant amount more friction introduced to my system, which effectively eliminates some of the advantage that I've created through a pulley system for my hauling. So this is a way to keep that mechanical advantage intact without introducing a lot more friction. Okay, this last device that I'm going to show to set up as a ratchet is now probably the most common device that guides carry. And it's increasingly common for people in a recreational setting to carry this for crevasse rescue as well. This tool is very, very helpful in the event that you're traveling as a party of two and you need to do a rescue solo because your partner's in the hole. So this is the micro traction. The mini traction was the predecessor of this device. And this device is a camming pulley. So not only do you get the advantage of a pulley, which reduces friction, but you also get the prussic action combined with it, which pins the rope in place and creates a ratchet. So really handy to have, especially considering it weighs almost the same as a standard prussic minding pulley. One thing to keep in mind with this device is it's a little confusing to get to learn how to use it initially. So definitely recommend you practice in your house a few dozen times every season before you go out and try to use it as part of your crevasse rescue system. Now this pulley not only can it work when the rope is going up and around the pulley, but it can also work when the rope is under tension in the same way that you would add a friction hitch like a prusik to a tensioned rope. So super helpful in the event that you need to self-rescue from a crevasse as well. So this pulley system, it has two plates that slide apart. And inside that plate, there are symbols. One that shows the load or a load and the other that shows a climber. I'll show you a close up of this later. And I just need to make sure that I load this correctly so the teeth engage on my loaded rope. So I clip my carabiner in with the gate facing up. I may want to dig my little hole, as was mentioned in the previous part of the same video, to make sure that it's not resting directly on the snowpack. Load my rope correctly using the symbols. There we go. And now if I pull on the load strand, the system is locked. And once I set up mechanical advantage system on the other side and this side starts to move, you can see it moves through quite easily and fluidly, much more fluidly than any of the other ratchet systems that we set up previously.